Did everybody except for Corey participate today, or was Denny still out? Denny was a partial participant, and uh, we held Johnny out. A little bit of knee uh, tendonitis, so it was just kind of something we monitored day to day. Uh, you know, kind of as we get back into ramping guys up from, from the trip, we want to be smart of how we push guys, but um, he was feeling a little discomfort, so we decided to just give him another day, and we'll see how he responds. What do you mean by the ramp up part? Just because I know you mentioned you got up and down and everything. What is, can you elaborate on that, well, I guess? Yeah, the, the yesterday was intentional as far as, you know, really blowing it out, seeing where guys were, getting up a lot of conditioning. Um, and, I, you know, I think that's, it served its purpose, but I think, you know, just that quick jolt after a long trip sometimes has adverse effects. So he was just feeling a, you know, a bit of tendonitis. So I think just out of the precautionary reasons to say, okay, give him a day, see how he responds. How long has that been an issue for him? Um, I don't believe it's been a long-term issue. Um, and I, I'm not going to speak for the medical if it's something that they've discussed and now it just flared up. Or, but it hasn't, you know, it hasn't stopped him from participating thus far. What Corey, the four to six week time frame, is that for him to ramp back up, or do you guys expect him to be able to play again in four to six weeks? Well, I, I don't necessarily know for sure, you know, what the exact timetable is. I'm, to my understanding, that six week would be him ready to go. But you know, I'll get clarity on that. Uh, I do believe he's, he's moving better. The swelling is, has gone down significantly, but we're still going to take our time and make sure he's right before we throw him back out there. Wes, how do you divide it up these next kind of two weeks? What's the focus heading into Charlotte, I guess? Well, I mean, obviously you want to get whole and healthy, and that would be ideal. Um, but we still want to make sure we're, we're, we're growing and continuing our foundation. We'll add more offensively, and you know we've added some things defensively today. Just knowing, um, you know, we want to have a base, but also some adjustments, you know, under our belt. We have to use them or go to them. We, we have them, but uh, we still don't want to inundate our guys, you know, to the point where they're overthinking the game. Still kind of play within ourselves, understand the concepts and our spacing, and then read and react. When you're talking about adjustments, you mean just from seeing the first two games in Japan? It has nothing to do with the first games. No, it's just, just more um, as we implement, you know, we, we're on a tight, not tight schedule, but we, we sat down and have a checklist. And we're going down our checklist of what's important, what do we want to prioritize for the last two remaining games of the preseason, and then what do we need for sure uh, prior to game one. Coach, now that you're well over United, uh, what has he added to his game that was kind of different or characteristics from Denver to now? Well, I think, um, you know, his game in, in a nutshell, he, he's got the ability to get downhill, play in attack mode, get to the rim. Uh, create a shot for himself or others. Um, I do believe in seeing where he was as a young player in Denver to when I had last had him uh, two years ago, there's a better understanding of, of spatial um, discipline. Uh, he doesn't force shots. I think he allow, allows the game to come to him. And that plays to his strength. Um, you know, he's a terrific defensive rebounder. So I want to see him continue to you know, rebound the ball. And that gives him a license to push. I think that's where he's at his best in the open floor. Johnny, being a, a first-time father and being in his first NBA training camp, seems like an unusual situation. Uh, how are you guys helping him through that, helping him compartmentalize? Yeah, I think it just, you know, uh, this is kind of a safe haven for him, you know, where he can just kind of put it aside for two hours and work on his craft. You know, I know it's a lot. And, you know, I was a first-time father at 37. <laughs> so to, to, to be, be, be a young man and have to go through that is it's exciting, but it's also daunting and overwhelming at times. Um, we have a lot of resources, and we're, we're at his disposal as far as what he needs and how we can help. You know, some of it is just going to be figuring out what works best for him and his family, the, the flow of, you know, uh, the day-to-day. -day. Um, he'll figure that out. But, uh, you know, as far as between the lines, um, you know, we want to make sure he's playing you know, with a clear head and not, not overwhelmed. Is there anything unique about a big man that is good to coach another big man? Uh, well, if you're re referring to a guy like uh, Gortat, for sure. Um, you know, I touched on it a little bit yesterday where he had a 15-year career. So he's, he's played at a high level for a long time and kind of knows the games within the game, the tricks of the trade, and I think just nuance things, you know, from body position to um, sniffing certain situations out. We can teach it, but I think a guy who's done it can show it. And I think that sometimes resonates with young players quicker uh, as far as the learning curve. You know when something's wrong right away. So 
immediately I knew uh, went right back to the locker room and ended up being the best uh, best decision. Were you injured at all in college? I'm sorry, I should have looked that up before. Well, but. I, mean, I, I had a, um, a similar injury to this, actually, like uh, right in the middle of my freshman year. Um, but but thankfully, I mean, I've been off the in, off the you know injury list for four years, so. Yeah, well, it's not going to last forever, right? Um, and in the grand scheme of things, you know, however long it takes, a sprained ankle isn't the end of the world, right? So um, it's been tough the last couple of days. Like, you know, getting out of bed and moving around has been difficult. But, um, you know, I know I'll be back sooner rather than later. And thankfully I'm not missing, you know, important games down the stretch. You know, the preseason is important. Um, but if I were to choose a time to miss, it would be, it'd be now. Looking back at your college stats, it seemed like maybe you only missed two or three games with that last injury. When's the last time you missed uh, the amount of games that you could miss this time? Then. I yeah. Mean, well, you, you, you're probably going to be out longer than two or three games this right. time, right? Would, it, would you have to go back to high school where you had an injury? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So high school, I, uh, I broke my foot my senior year. Um, I was out for like half the season. So um, that was probably the longest stretch of games that I've missed. So I've, all in all, I've been really, really lucky. And... Um, you know, it sucks to get hurt like this, but I'm really thankful for the health that I've had before it. So, came down on somebody's foot. Yeah. So, went up to take a layup. I uh, was jumping off my left foot, and as soon as I planted to go jump, it like rolled over on somebody's foot. Yeah. I like this, Corey. Who do you speak to to maybe help get your spirits up and, and to get support and advice and wisdom? Yeah, I mean, thankfully, I have a great camp and a lot of a great team and a lot of people that I've, I'm really close with played basketball, right? My parents played basketball. My fiance played basketball. Um, you know, agents, other coaches, other teammates from college and, and here, everyone knows what it's like to be injured and have been in my shoes before. And so while it might seem like a huge deal for me and that um, things feel like they're, you know, shaky, um, everyone around me is able to calm me down and uh, let me know that, it, you know, Big picture, grand scheme, it's it's just a small, small uh, bump in the road. When did you get engaged? I got engaged about two weeks before I got here. So end of uh, summer, yeah, thanks. Congrats. Thanks. Did you watch the game the other night? The Wemba Nye game. The, the, met, the game was Mem Wemba Nye and Scoot Henderson. Oh, 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 yeah, I watched... Uh, I watched like the first half pretty close, and the second half I was kind of in and out. I mean, kids are talented, man. Especially uh, Wemba Miana. Um, I mean, just the physical uh, physical set he has alone is incredible, um, and what he can do with that frame is, is special. So, um, you know, obviously he's a highly touted prospect for a reason, and we expect really big things out of him. Kuzma has said a few times that he feels like you've made uh, some noticeable steps in this training camp. How do you feel like you've improved year over year? Oh, I mean, it's it's kind of I mean, it's kind of what I've done ever since you know being in college. Every summer, uh, made really big steps and really big strides. Um, I feel like my consistency and my confidence is higher than it's ever been. Um, last year, I had a lot of kind of internal up and down moments. Um, and this year, I feel like the, st the ship's a lot more steady. Um, I'm much more of a weapon off the bounce. Um, finishing at the rim, um, ball security, things like that. Uh, I've taken a huge step too. And as I feel, I just feel generally more comfortable, right? Like I just, I know everybody's name in here. Um, I know exactly where to go. Um, I know how long it takes to get places. I know my role in this team. Um, everybody believes in me. And, um, that level of comfort mentally uh, does volumes for players. Anybody here will tell you that. Early in your rookie season, you were pressed into duty to play meaningful minutes. What advice would you give to Johnny if he faces the same uh, opportunity? Yeah, let it fly. Um, you know you know how to play this game. You know how to play it well. That's why you're here. Um, and these players that you're playing against, like, yeah, they're good, but you can hang with every single one of them. So um, he's got nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. Um, and, you know, nerves and butterflies are good. Um, you got to use that to your advantage. Uh, knee's feeling fine. Just, you know, making sure that I can get on top of it so it doesn't wor get worse at all. Which one is it? It's the right one. Is 
something that maybe been dealing you've been dealing with before, or just flared up recently? Or? Just flared up recently. There's nothing to be concerned about. Yeah, uh, I'm glad he did it in preseason and not in the regular season, so I can just get a feel for it. But um, no, that's that's what the game of basketball is. Just you know, yeah, you gotta be ready to be it, put in any position. So I thought it was really good for me to try to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You're uh, going through your first NBA training camp and you're a first-time father at the same time. I mean, that seems like a lot. How have you been managing yeah. it? Uh, is there anything you've been doing in particular? Uh, nothing in particular, you know, just, you know, taking it one day at a time, uh, one diaper at a time, you know. But, <laughs> nah, uh, it all came at me pretty fast. But, um, you know, it's also very exciting and, you know, really good for me, too, to be able to mature. Yeah, what were some of the takeaways from uh, the NBA Japan games in those two games? Yeah, uh, you know, playing the defending champs and an experienced team like the Warriors, you get to see um, what makes them so good and, you know, what makes them a really, you know, well-bonded team. Um, and I thought, you know, there's a lot of good and bad takeaways from it. What's it been like guarding Brad in practice? I would imagine you're defending him. Uh, yeah, any anytime, uh, you know, I have to pick a matchup, I'll try to pick him because obviously, you know, he's one of the better, if not the best player on the team. So. Um, it's just going to make me better and make him better, you know, pushing each other. Anything that, uh, you know, maybe you didn't see on film that you, know, you experienced it firsthand, you're like, wow, this is difficult to, to defend? Uh, basically, you know, he's just hard to defend. I mean, you know, I've seen it on TV, seen it in video games, but, um, you know, being able to stand in front of him and guard him one-on-one -on -one in real life, it's, it's crazy. But, uh, you know, it's got to treat him just like he's any other basketball player. You know, I can't treat him like... He's, he's a god or something, you know, it's just coming on playing basketball. Is it, is it particularly tiring, him, tiring guarding him since he, he runs so much? Uh, no, nah, not really. I mean, you know, the team made sure that we're all in shape, so, but like I said before, he is definitely very difficult to guard. What was it like to have your first NBA road trip aside from the Summer League to go all the way out to Japan? Uh, well, it was good for me to just get out of the country since I've never been to Japan, but um, I thought it went really well. And, you know, just the bus rides, the plane ride, being able to talk to teammates and, you know, get more familiar with them and build that chemistry. When did you want to, when did you start getting the itch to kind of get out there and get on court? Uh, a couple months ago, we had a situation where we met in uh, front of the locker room in Orlando when the Wizards play Orlando Magic and uh, I had a chance to talk to Tommy Shepard. I had a, ch a chance to talk to... Uh, Coach Wes and and obviously you know uh, for me it was just to see the guys talk to Brad say hello to Brad and uh, say hello to a couple of European guys but uh, Tommy said that hey uh, if you if you have time we'll love to have you on uh, you know in, in DC and you could drop some knowledge to the to the kids in our team uh, Coach Wes said yeah definitely that would be wonderful and uh, if that was the moment when click something clicked in my head and I said you know what. I think I might use that chance, and uh, I want I want to try. So I made a phone call about a month, month and a half ago uh, to Tommy. I spoke with him. My agent talked to him also, and I said, listen, let's try the first two weeks and see how things working, and, and then we're going to go from there. Uh, I'm going to stay here stay here till 15th, uh, which is uh, until uh, right after the last game, preseason game, I'm going to go back home. Uh, and uh, like I said, let's let's see how those two, two weeks are gonna go. Uh, you know, there's a few different things I gotta look at. First of all, I'm not a single man anymore. I have a family. I have a wife. I gotta, you know, it's not only about me. It's about me and my family. Uh, two, I'm 40 years old. <laughs> it's not like I'm 21 years old. My body feels every practice. Uh, we have a lot of young cats in the team that like to go at me, so and like to go at them too. And that drains a lot of energy from my body. So, you know, I, I got to see how I'm going to feel after two weeks, you know. And uh, at the same time, I don't, I, I don't want to step on anybody's toe. I know coaches, they have their own routine. They have their schedules. They have their connection with the players. So I really want to kind of like fit in, help out, but don't, 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 don't disturb anything in the team. You know, definitely a huge shout out and uh, thank you to the uh, Washington Wizards organization for bringing me here. I feel great 
the, the team, management, coaches, players, staff members, even media members, they welcome me super warm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just really honored right now. What's it like having a screen named after you? Uh, you know what? Uh, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. If you ask me uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago that eventually my screens will be one of the best screens in the world, I'll say, <laughs> you got to change your drugs, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, great feeling, uh, great feeling. Um, I'm not going to lie, I had a couple phone calls from different teams about going into, a, you know, different practices and different uh, training camps to try to obviously explain the screening and stuff like that. But it's not that easy. It's not only one practice. You got to you got to work with the players. Uh, it has to also come with experience. We also ha has to come with certain physicality and you need you need to do many, many, many reps in order to become a great screener.